What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie to 988 coming at you live once again uh, through the power of the internet. And what an amazing power it is, because that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about computers. I want to talk about the internet. I want to talk to you about what's going on in this world. It's a story time video, and I invite you to sit back and listen. Um, but as you guys may know, if you follow me on Twitter or Facebook, uh, this week I'm getting in a new computer. I'm building it. Myself, well, my friend Chris Bruner and I are going to build it together. And I'm doing it because uh, twofold. Number one, I wanted to start a gameplay channel. And you're going to find a link to that gameplay channel here below. I would really like it if you would open it in another window and hit subscribe if you think you'd like to watch me play video games with commentary and things along that lines. Uh, but I needed a better PC to do that with so that I could capture the games on max setting, so that I could make them look very well, good, so that I could use XSplit so that you could see my face while I play, um, and, and we can enjoy the game together. Uh, and I think that's going to be an, a fun direction to go in. I don't want my main channel to change, but I felt like I couldn't do that on the main channel without scaring away a lot of people. So this gives me the opportunity to, to give everybody what they want without not giving people too much of what they want but as I was ordering this computer I used my king of the web money the last of it that I had dog-eared for this too by the way and that means this is from you guys like you guys are vote the ones who voted me uh, king of the web you're the guys who helped me win that money and this and if you're the person if you're one of the people that went there and voted all the time and helped me win that thing this is your Christmas gift to me you know and I, I can't tell you I can't thank you enough I can't tell you how appreciative I am. This is the most amazing device I've ever owned in my life. And it's a, a GeForce, uh, an NVIDIA, uh, an Intel i7-3770K with a, a GeForce 670 in it, like 16 gig of RAM, all on a nice motherboard. And uh, I got a, a 480 gig SSD. I mean, it's pimping. It's going to be the best beast I've ever even imagined. I can't even imagine how powerful it's going to be. And when I boot it up for the first time, and I play my favorite game, whatever game it is I'm playing at the time, probably Far Cry 3, I'm going to be in complete awe. Just complete shock that that's, that's my life. And I, I, I'm like that all the time now. Because let, let's talk about televisions for a second. When I was young, we had a, this big box television. It was a piece of furniture made mostly out of wood. Um... Weighed 500 pounds, weighed as much as I do now. You know, had wheels on it so you could move it around the house. And had this luxurious, gigantic 29-inch screen in it. I mean, that was massive. That was crazy technology back then. Those old cathode ray tubes, you know. And, I mean, we were lucky to have it. That was luxurious. You know, we couldn't have fit better in our house. But I don't think they made much better than that high-end television. I mean, now, these days, like, I, I almost take it for granted, but for that thing cost my mother $1,000 in 1980s money. You know, now I've got this 37-inch television here, which you can't see. I know you can't see it, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not up to speed. It's four years old. I bought it four years ago. You know, 60 hertz and some of the colors going on it a little bit. But at the end of the day, it's still mind-boggling to me how powerful that that device is and I have my computer connected to it too so it works as a second monitor and and we'll watch shows on it that I, I've downloaded or I'm streaming right from the internet through Netflix wow you know the, the entertainment used to be this black cable that came from the wall that connected into the back of your your television you know and we had 13 channels 13 channels that's what I grew up with at one point we had three because we didn't have cable because there wasn't cable available in our in our area. Uh, just shocking to me the way television has changed, the way the actual physical devices have changed. And speaking of televisions, here's this is my iPad. This is you know a gift for my fiance. This is my bed television. This is the television I watch when I go to bed at night. You know, and we're talking about a ten inch screen here. We're talking about eight nine pounds and this is the one that i have tell me stories at night this is the one that i i have tell me stories that are stored on other people's computers that they 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 transmit through satellite and then through wires to my home oh, just mind-boggling to me just 
shocking to me. And the very first video game system I ever played was an Atari 2600. And now I've got that Wii U in the front room. I've got that Xbox. I've got that PlayStation. And the graphics are phenomenal. They're in 1080p. And my taste for video games has changed since I was a kid, too. When I was very, very young and I was playing Atari 2600, those games were simple. And they had very simple graphics and they had very simple gameplay. There wasn't a lot of room on an Atari cartridge to, to, to store information, so the games had to be fairly simple. But as I've grown older, all of my tastes have changed. I want a movie with more feeling and more heart and less action. I want a series that really grips me and, and, and makes me feel compelled. I want a book that can, that can absorb me or that I can absorb, you know? And, and I want a game that's massive and huge and fascinating and has an incredible voice acting and storyline. And they've kept up. And the graphics, man, look at the graphics I grew up with. Look at Atari 2600. Or look at the good graphics, you know, um, the original Super Nintendo. Mind-blowing mind when those graphics came out. The, the original graphics for Quake just blew my mind at the time, the first time I saw Quake on a high-end machine. Doom, Doom, that game alone, was just I, it was one of the very first PC games that I'd seen that looked like that. Those rich, vibrant colors, that 3D gameplay, even though it clearly, I mean, it wasn't really 3D. It was 2D sprites for the most part, but uh, felt 3D and looked 3D, and, and wow, you know, wow. I remember playing that on the Halloween uh, before coming to Arkansas, you know, leaving Virginia for the, the last time and relocating here. In 1994, you know, and just thinking, this is this is the future. I live in the future, and look what's transpired since then. And I'm not even that old. I mean, compared to you, I'm probably pretty old. But I'm 38. That's happened in the past 18 years. That's happened in the past 16 years. You know, that's how much things have changed. That's how much things have grown. And I live in a constant state of amazement and awe. When I do video game commentary and I do gameplay reviews, people are like, Boogie, you don't really seem to be picking up on a lot of the, the negative parts of this game. That's because, to me, there's very few negative parts because I'm completely blown away. And unless it's, you know, I know my iPad's not perfect. I know it's fragile. I, I know that I could drop it and crack it. I know it doesn't have enough memory in it. I wish there was more, more hard drive space for me there. I know there's minor things that bother me about it. But... It's still just such an amazing device. My phone, you know, I have an HTC Resound. That device is more computer computing power than NASA had when they put a man on the moon. I, and and it the screen is vibrant and beautiful, and it makes perfect phone calls most of the time. And it can download just through the air, through the air, any file, any information. I can, and it's like Star Trek. You know, I grew up watching Star Trek thinking, man, one day the future is going to be phenomenal. We're in the future. That is the future. We all have our own personal communicators right here. And, and we, can, we can tap it and say, you know, what's the phone number for Billy Bob's Chili House? And it'll tell you. What's the average rainfall in, in North Dakota during the, the winter months? Right there. Right there it'll tell you. Just magic. Magic. And it's not magic. I know it's not magic. It's science. It's technology. I understand it. I know how a circuit board works. I know the components that go together in that phone. I know the components that, to an extent, not as well as, say, my friend Adam, but I do know, I do get it, but it all comes together to have this magical, awe-inspiring effect. And I'm, I kind of get used to it after a while. I get used to it, you know, because I use this computer I'm on every day, and I, I look at this television every day, and I use this iPad every day, and I make phone calls every day. But every once in a while, I'll get off the phone, and I'll look at that thing, and I'll just think, wow. You know? I'll, I'll log off of my iPad going to sleep at night after playing a game of, of, of Duels 2000, or 2013, Magic 2013, or, or Ascension, or one of the uh, other games I like to play, and I just think, wow, how simple, how amazing was that? I just played a ma game of Magic with a guy across the universe, you know, randomly matched to him somewhere in this world. He's sitting on his sofa playing in his bed, too. I, I don't know, but 
I just can't get over it. I can't get over it. And when this new computer, uh, when I finally boot it up and I, and I see the graphics and I see the power and, and I start editing a video for you guys and, and I, I start putting it all together and, and experiencing it, I can only imagine, I can only imagine that, that we're just going to see. You know, just shatter my brain. Um, but it... I often wonder if you guys realize the difference in the world when I was very, very young and, or when I was your age. Because most of you are in your mid-20s. Some of you are a little younger. Some of you are a little older. I'm really curious if you know that you live in this futuristic, magical world that I could have only dreamt of. In fact, I didn't dare to dream these things. I guess now these days kids dream, oh, what about flying cars? Or what about... Jetpacks. So those things are never going to happen because they're dangerous. Even if we do get the technology, and we probably have it, we're never going to publish it. You're not going to allow people to fly jetpacks. It's just not going to happen. We're just not going to have flying cars. It's just not going to happen. But Star Trek's personal commuters, right? Communicator right there in your pocket. All day, every day. You live in the future. Um, and I, I just can't. Just can't get over it. And I hope you know, I hope you know how amazing the world is. And I can't imagine what our, our children or our children's children is going to think about this world. You know, yeah. Grandpa, did you really get into a car every day and drive to work? Did you really get into a metal device and drive it at 80 miles an hour, running the risk of some idiot slamming into you and also at 80 miles an hour and just everybody exploding? Bloating and dying and a grisly, miserable death. Did you really do that? Did you guys really have open heart surgery? You know, instead of just injecting stem cells into your bloodstream the way we do now? They cut your heart open and just slice on it? That's crazy, Grandpa. You lived in the dark ages. I, I don't know, man. Uh, but I hope you guys learn to appreciate what you have and, and how magical it is. And I, I, I can't wait to see what else is coming.